What's up everyone? It is Big Poner and today I'm going to be going through all the patch notes and I'm going to be hitting all of the most important things, you know, if you don't have like, you know, three, four, five, six hours to like severely comb through all this stuff, but you want to know the stuff that's important or you just want the general breakdown and then you can like look up stuff that might be specific to your build. That's kind of what this is going to be is I've read extensively through this stuff. Um, all the patch notes are out now, the, all the gems are out, so I'm going to point out all the stuff that's going to be stuff that you should know for the Scourge and for the Atlas expansion. Basically just kind of streamline it and point out all the most important things. Um, so yeah, we will we will go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to start off with, with like the stuff that I think is the most important, but I'm going to kind of run from like the top of the of the patch notes. So the big starters, one of the things that are going to be probably the biggest thing for every player to decide is like what their focus is going to be for the league as far as like earning currency. Obviously, if you make more current currency, you're going to have more fun. Um, and you, you have to select a build um, that's going to be good for whatever it is that you want to do. Obviously, if you wind up picking a uh, map clear and then you decide, you know, that you or you pick a build that's good for map clearing, but then you wind up like playing boss content, like you're not going to have a good time. Um, so you really have to decide, you know, what is it that I want to play this league? This league, we have so many choices. It's not really a just pick the the what's going to be the best thing. There's like this one choice and everyone's going to have to kind of focus towards that. We have the league mechanic, but I'm not really going to focus too much on that in this video. The reason why is because it's basically going to be something we're going to be using um, or everyone's going to be using just as they're playing through. Um, if you guys didn't watch the, the their introduction video and their question answering, I'm going to include some of the information from that in this video. Um, but basically... Early on, you're not going to really get penalized by going ahead and using it. So their comment was that you're going to be able to create uh, stronger items for leveling just by using the league mechanic as you progress. The other really cool thing and the one real mention that I will say about this league mechanic is this league mechanic is going to be something that, that you're going to wind up using um, as throughout the whole league. And I really like the league mechanic because it's one of those league mechanics that sounds like it's going to be useful as you're like leveling through the game um, and like trying to make your character strong. But then in the end game, you're going to be able to chase like super crazy items using the league mechanic, which gives is going to give the league even more playability, which I think that this league, there's going to be players stick around for a really long time, assuming that there isn't like some like massive issue with um, the update. And I have to give that, you know, unless, because <laughs> it has happened a few times. Um, but it'd have to be pretty bad to kill this this league, because this league is um, looks like it's going to be amazing. I'm actually super stoked about this league. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go through is picking out what end game you're going to wind up doing. Um, Expedition is going to be in there if you didn't play it or if you did play it. This is going to be a good thing to go after. The main thing that to really note about Expedition is they nerfed the, the item level um, or area level. Uh, you used to be able to get like super high um, area levels like above a tier 16 map. Um, if you didn't play, yeah, you, you used to be able to do that. Um, now you can't do that. They've removed that. You won't be able to get above uh, 83, which that would be the equivalent of a tier 16 map. This is a pretty big nerf if you're using um, expeditions to farm bases, because now you, you know you're not going to be getting um, super high level bases just as like common drops, just based on the 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 area level. Um, so that's that is a nerf. Um, there's other nerfs that hit expedition, which is they. Well, it's kind of like a pseudo nerf. It's not specific to expeditions, but they are reducing the availability of fossils. So a couple of the best expedition um, logbooks were the fossil zones, like uh, Kuri War Graves or um, Volcanic Island. Uh, those were two 
those are two really good maps for farming fossils. Um, and yeah, so fossils aren't going to be as available anymore. So those maps uh, might be a little bit duncey or they might have changed the rewards altogether. Um, so that's something to note. Um, it was really nice to be able to farm like currency shards and fossils at the same time. Um, and you were able to get like resonators and stuff like that in there. So that being removed, that's a pretty big nerf. Um, but Expedition, if you enjoyed Expedition, is going to be a really good farming mechanic. Um, so definitely a viable choice if it's something that you want to play. But there's a lot of really good choices this league. So we're going to go into the other choices. And, and I will say, I really like logbooks. Um, if logbooks aren't super crazy expensive, I will definitely be playing um, logbooks this league. So the, the end game, where's the... I don't know. All right, Uber Endgame content. So this is basically going to be like between expeditions and these mechanics, you're going to definitely want to be picking one of these things basically to head towards or at least like the the vast, vast majority of players, unless you're doing something like you're going to be doing, you know, like enchantment farming, like like lab running or something like that, or now delve, which that would be the other option um, because now delve... Um, fossils are going to be more restricted to to delve we'll get more into that but they've removed um half of the resonators there's only going to be chaotic the gold ones um which is nice because you know you're going to be guaranteed the, the same value every time a resonator drops and then they've buffed um some of the weaker delve fossils and they're making it so that delve fossils are going to be more specific to delve and there's other buffs that are going into delve um, we'll cover that a little bit more but that would definitely be a viable option to choose um, because of the changes or at least to test out um, that might be a little bit riskier because we know these things are going to be a little bit better um, or we, we know that these things are always profitable every single league so with them being buffed up you can just assume that they're going to be that much better we got blight maps which have always been good early league. Um, now we have the Ravage Blight maps, which essentially you could just think about it like this. Um, they can be anointed nine times. So just going from three anointments to nine anointments, that's three times um, three times more um, more addition, like a three times multiplier right there, um, ju just in that. And the cool thing is that these maps are going to drop inside of Blight maps. That's what they said in the um, in, in the video. Um, so if you're wondering how you're going to get them, completing high tier, and it also says in here, completing high tier Blight maps, um, you, you, these maps can be obtained by completing high tier Blight maps. So probably like farming red tier maps, you're going to have a chance to get one of these to drop inside of your Blight map. So if you're farming Blight maps, you're going to wind up just collecting these. And then once you're strong enough to be able to do them, once you're like, these red Blight maps are a breeze, I'm going to try out one of these. Um, and that should be even better. Um, so yeah, that, that would be a viable choice. You, so if that sounds dope to you, if you're like, I already li really liked Blight Maps, but you know, after early game, there's not really much after that. They kind of, their their value starts kind of plummeting. Now there's an Uber end game content for that, which is awesome. Um, so Legion. Legion's gonna be a really good one because we're gonna have Legion on our Atlas. And since the Atlas size is reduced, um, you're going to be able to unlock that Legion earlier. Like, it's going to be faster for people to unlock that. I think that Legion's going to be really popular because um, they buffed they buffed the Timeless Conflicts. And now they're going to have these upgraded Timeless Conflicts. The question of how good they're going to be is kind of there. They didn't really drop in on it. And there's not really any indication of how good they're going to be. It says that they're improving the rewards and monsters gaining challenging modifiers. So it's going to be more dangerous, basically, but there's going to be more rewards. Kind of my thought was maybe it's going to be kind of like pushed back to how it really was in Legion, which is like absolutely insane. Um, maybe like one of these upgraded ones is going to produce something like we would have seen um, when Legion first got released. And it was just like off the chain and like every single wave just had like crazy amount of um, drops. Um, so, so that's cool. Um, that's something to look forward to. And since this is one that, that 
that has five slots because you could do a five way so if you had five of these it would be five times the reward so like a five times multiplier on upgrading it there instead of having you know like three of them and then uh, four of them and then one upgraded one and that would be like the first level there's gonna be like five tiers of that so that could be really crazy um, obviously it's probably gonna also wind up scaling up um, XP this could wind up coming back is like the the super crazy way to to level up characters like it was legion was the league that had the most level 100 players um people that reached level 100 just because the five ways were so crazy um xp wise it got super nerfed after legion um but it was basically like you get someone with a headhunter and a cyclone build and they just spin around and everyone just levels up like crazy um maybe now that will wind up being uh, a really good XP choice again, as well as having really crazy loot. But we also got buffed up Breaches, which is going to be the next one. I think that Legion and Breaches are probably going to be two of the most popular. Um, the two of the most popular of these, just because they're pretty much popular almost every single league, anyways. People really like Breaches. People really like Legion. Um, so we have a, a whole new tier of of Breach Stone, the flawless Breach Stones, which you can only get by them dropping. Um, so that's a pretty big deal, um, just to have a whole nother tier, you know, how, how people already use the, the, the Chiulas for, for group power leveling. Now there's going to be a whole nother tier, so more XP, more loot, but what really makes Breach sound really good is now they've actually added it so that the Breach Stones have two modifiers on them, um, which is just you know two more modifiers to buff up the breach is already you know taking it up two extra levels and that's on all of them and then the flawless ones are going to have four stats so that's like basically adding you know a, a, a low amount of um uh, of map rolls like like two-thirds of of what a, a full map would be um of rolls of buffs onto on top of um, a breach stone so that's pretty crazy and then they're making it so that there's going to be reward types inside of the breaches which is another huge upgrade so breaches really got like supercharged this league um, and then on top of that you know they added they added unique items inside of there um, so it which you know a lot of people are saying that the those you know new unique items inside of there are going to just wind up being worthless probably because there's going to be so many people farming it but it's cool that they added something else in there um so yeah that's probably going to be really popular um simulacrum simulacrum got buffed simulacrum was already it used to be like really good for farming um the, the downside had always been to Simulacrum that you had to like run through like it was basically like the first 10 levels of it is basically you really wouldn't get anything and then like it would start to get good like after 10 and then the, like the last like five would be like really good but but there was just like a lot of time that was spent like trying to get to those good reward levels um, that kind of made that the rewards on on Simulacrum when you have to buy um, a Simulacrum in the first place to run it um, just not really as good. Um, it, it was normally really good early league or when like clusters and the uniques are worth a good amount, then it was worth it. Um, but then it kind of just becomes like a gamble. You're kind of just hoping that you get, you know, a three voices or something like that, or just really lucky on drops. Now that it has 30 waves, um, because they add another 10 waves, um, it's going to make these a lot more valuable because you're still going to have those first like 10 waves where it's, you kind of feel like I'm not going to get anything from this just because the, 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 the item level that's dropping is just so low and you know, the delirium level is really low. So it's like not going to really drop me much since you're going to have basically like 20 levels, like 10 levels where it's going to be going to be that good zone. And then you're going to have like this really good zone of 10 more levels that you have increased chances for the uniques increased chances for the clusters increased chances for um the uniques it's just going to make it just take it to a next level the thing that i will say about this is this is probably going to be one of the harder things is my guess just because like you're basically like 10 levels on top of it i'm just going to assume that that's going to be like the equivalent to playing like a 200 percent delirium map um because 
the level 20 is 100% delirium. So, I, and if they're adding 10 levels, I kind of feel like it's probably going to scale like by at least like 10% per level. So, um, I, I think it's going to be pretty crazy, and there's going to be a higher chance for bosses to spawn. So, I think that, that this might be one of the harder mechanics. That's kind of my guess, just because it's 10 more levels of, of escalation versus like, you know, um, there's one level basically been added to, one level with four passives added to to um, breaches, timeless is like five times, and then um, blights is basically like a three times multiplier. We don't have a ton of information on how these are going to be, so it's kind of going to be seeing, but my guess is that similar crumps are probably going to be that thing that's going to be like the, the hardest. Um, but we'll see on that also. A bonus to that is that they've actually made it so that delirium orbs drop more. Um, since the removal of the fractured fossils functionality, like they don't really work anymore. Um, they, like they basically like close to just removed them from the game. Um, I feel like, I, I feel like the delirium orbs are kind of really hard to get. And um, it kind of, the, the delirium mechanic kind of died out quite a bit. Um, but now they're making the drop rates higher. Um, they've reduced the cost, um, I believe, of those. Because, like, the last time they had delirium on the Atlas, it was, like, 20C to run in. And it's just, like, like why? <laughs> like, with as low of a chance as it was, it was to get delirium orb and stuff like that, I don't think a lot of people were going for that. Um that, that was kind of my feeling. It's just like other things are more valuable. Um, so yeah, so all exciting stuff here. Obviously, we've got the major map change. There's going to be four zones. We lost, I think, 40-something maps. Uh, 40, 40, 46 maps were removed. There were a lot of really good maps taken off that I was sad to see go. I really do actually like this Atlas expansion. I was kind of worried about this Atlas expansion. The reason why is because just the track record over the last year, they've been just making a lot of really bad changes, um, like really bad changes to the game, um, bad, I think, interactions with their community and stuff like that. So when I heard that they were going to wind up cutting the Atlas in half, I was expecting it to be a really bad change, but I actually really like um, this change and the reason why is because they've cut off what about like a third a little bit less than a third of the maps and but they've reduced the watchstones to half so basically it's going to take half as much effort to get to the end game which i think is really important i think what the direction that they're taking it now is them finally doing what i've been saying forever they needed to do which is add more end game type stuff and they need to make it more accessible and by making the atlas take half um, the amount of time which is not really half it's really like you know maybe it'll take like 70 percent of the effort or something like that probably less than 70 because they removed a third of the, about a third of the maps but then you have you'll have four times less four times less um sets of of progressions to get to that final point so like half the amount of watchstones that you have to collect to get to max and then also they actually made it better um so this is this is one of the really big positives is for each one of the maps they removed like remember they removed about a third of them they did take and they buffed it actually by 50 percent to these so we lost a third of our maps but it's a 1.5 percent multiplier now so that it's a net gain so you're going to have higher amounts of, of modifier scaling with less um, with less less stuff to complete. And like I said, they removed some of like my favorite maps. I, I would say don't get too down on this. Um, a part of it is I think that they're like, we want people to play some new maps instead of just like every single league people play the exact same stuff. Like you can tell in here because there's a lot of the favorites like Bizarre, Beach, um, Burial Chambers, Castle Ruins, and Burial Chambers. Now we can't get Headhunter card, but we have another place that we can get one now. Um, and that's another thing I'm going to touch on. Um, you're able to get that now out of... Um, Poor Joy's Asylum, you're going to be able to get the Fiend card, which is the Corrupted Headhunter. So those um, those Poor Joy's are probably going to skyrocket in value. We'll see how frequently they drop. Um, hopefully it's a lot better than 
Um, the doctor's cards were in burial chambers because you could run like 5,000 burial chambers and, you know, like get one card. Um, so that was pretty bad. If that's the if that's the rate that they're dropping in burial chambers uh, in poor joys, then essentially it, it doesn't even matter that that's in there because you can't realistically farm that many um, of a unique map. Um, so yeah, but Colonnade gone, City Square gone, Coves, Desert Springs. I, I'm just listing the ones that that are the most popular. Graveyard. I don't understand them removing Graveyard because Graveyard has um, has the 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 brother stash, which was like um, if you don't know the history behind that card, that card was um, for for like a memento to to one of the people that worked for GGG that passed is. Yeah, so I, I mean, I don't remember the story that well, but I kind of remember it when it first happened and was added. So I wonder if they will add that card anywhere else, like to a different map. Um, but they didn't in this one. They might have just overlooked it and just been like, that's a really popular map, so we're going to take that out. Marshes, um, Iceberg, Phantasmagoria, I would say, probably isn't hasn't been popular in a long time. But a lot of these peer precinct primordial pool like a lot of the like smaller like like really easy to run like um nice maps that people tend to really like um they've removed which what i think is probably going to happen is they're probably going to rotate maps so since they have all this really good stuff coming in and this is like a super loaded patch i think that probably they're removing some of those favorite maps now that they'll bring back later on um, in other leagues, they, they don't have as much content to release. Um, that's kind of my guess. That's something I would do. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit. Maybe I'm not. We'll find out. Um, we'll find out next league on that. Um, so, yeah. Um, the other thing about this that I really like is they've taken it and made it so, so the zones, they've got these listed, um, the, the special item bases that, that drop. I, I really like how they've done this. They kind of like uh, sit together well. They've got evasion. Um, they, I think it's pretty nice. Like just the whole zone, like pick a map there and those things they drop. Four zones. You can kind of be like, these are the things that I want. These are where I'm going to go. Um, this is maybe something that you should pay attention to if you're going to be base farming um, or looking for specific bases early. Um, or like, you know, check POE the first couple days and see what the mass majority pl players are playing. Maybe farm those zones so that those bases that are going to be more valuable are dropping for you. That might be a smart thing to do. Um, as I was saying, divination card change up. Honestly, the, the biggest one, the only one that really stands out to me is that like big drop, which is the fiend is now able to be found inside of poor joys. Um, that that's one. I mean, it's cool they added time lost relic to expedition logbooks. More than likely, time lost relic isn't gonna be like. I mean, it's a cool card to collect. It's like the gambler cards, you know. Like you might get something, so it's cool to have it drop. Um, but it's not gonna be like some like like that's how I'm gonna make my currency, which is the way a lot of these are. Um, so I'm not like I'm not gonna go through through like all this stuff. But basically, like. A lot of these cards were dropping in specific maps, and now they're dropping in different places because they these maps aren't going to be around for this league. Hopefully, just for this league. Um, so we've got Atlas, Atlas passive changes, um, and they've added stuff for Expedition. Uh, obviously, Expedition was was really good. Um, Expedition's actually replacing Parandis. I think this is a super good swap. If you didn't play Expedition, Expedition's great. Um, probably the best league mechanic that they've released since um, since Delirium. Um, it, it was unfortunate that that they had a bad interview, um, telling players, you know, we don't care about you, we're going to do what we want. Um, <laughs> like they had a really good league mechanic, but all of the other changes in the patch notes were just like basically middle fingers to to the players, and then they basically verbally gave a literal middle finger to the players in their in their announcement for for the league so it's probably one of their worst leagues which is saying a lot considering the last year um so i'm glad that they're not taking a better change and like all these patch notes look good um it sounds like they've actually been listening to what players want um so 
and as someone that's played for a really long time, like they've added the things that that I think are really important, which is giving the ability to chase items, giving end game, like making it more accessible for more players to to like actually get to that end game content. Um, which you know I don't think everyone should just get shoveled up there and everyone just instantly is you know able to beat everything, but you know just extending the game like patch after patch by making like the old content that we don't really want to play we just are racing through that to get to play the new stuff and do the end game stuff like making that stuff even take even more time and you know harder like that's not the st it's not fun to play that same stuff we played so many times over and over again we don't want that content to be harder the only people that that possibly could be enjoying that is like someone that's like it's their first couple times playing through like like and even then it's probably a low majority of those players because they probably want to get up and you know try out all the new stuff and try out full builds and all the passives and stuff like that so it's a better better direction um like i said um the the delve changes um i, I really like the delve changes i mean it, it honestly has felt like for over a year that they're just like kicking delve in the teeth um like ggg's just been holding like 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 the delver's head and just like kicking them in the teeth like over and over again and then it was like th th them getting basically getting rid of like fractured fossil fossils functionality was basically like them just like kicking the head off across the wall like <laughs> like like finish him like psh, like kick his head off <laughs> um so there's there's that and it was just kind of like like you get Dell fossils everywhere from like every mechanic and it was probably more efficient to get Dell fossils out of a lot of other mechanics than Delve itself, which is pretty crazy. And then, you know, all of my complaints about Delve, which was like, it takes so much invested time to actually get into Delve. So the only players that were really going to benefit from Delve like ever were people that were like committed to delve it wasn't something you could be like oh i want to play some delve for a couple weeks it was like you either delve or it's just like a waste of your time like you're just losing currency and stuff like that to to play it so they addressed a lot of these things i, I mean i think it's going to bring life back to it um they they've like i said they've made it so that so that Fossil is going to be more restricted to to delve. You're going to get more fossils, more resonators. They're going to be in delve. Um, they also made it so that you can jump ahead. So they had that jump ahead feature, but it just jumped you up to basically the equivalent of a level one map. Um, they've made it so that now you can jump all the way up to the equivalent to a tier 13 map. And then on top of that, they doubled your starting soul fight. Um, like your sulfite cap so like before you even d jump in you'll have double the amount basically available to you um, from just running through stuff so it gives you the ability to like jump in at a place that's going to be meaningful and to make that more that way they took and also made it so that rewards are going to scale up faster inside of delve so it's like not going to be like i have to run 300 depth you know before i'm even getting anything out of delve um, they increased the the frequency of bosses and zones and stuff like that. So hopefully, you know, that brings some some life to Delve. I mean, all those things that they basically addressed are things that I've been saying for probably like two years that are the reasons why I don't like Delve is because it just is too much of a time investment. You have basically nothing to gain until you get deeper. And it was just like patch note after patch note. It's just like it. they just made it worse and worse and worse and worse. And I may not have ever really liked Delve, but as someone that, that likes the game and knowing that there's a large community of people that like Delving, it's kind of like, why are you doing this, GGG? Like, <laughs> like why? Do you just want to lose that that group of your player base or what? Um, and then they've also added like a bunch of, you know, like, like small changes and stuff like that. Um, some small changes if you're going to delve you can read that stuff um like just small changes to monsters and stuff like that um so cool change to labyrinth uh this is kind of important they're basically saying like they had tried to make it so that people could like find their ascendancies and you'd basically throw in one of the offerings and then that offering would open up a portal and you'd be able to go do a trial um 
they felt that that, that, that wasn't good enough, so they've just made it so that your eternal labyrinth, you don't have to complete anything, so there's no longer are you going to have to complete um, complete stuff inside of maps. So you basically just your first three ascendancies, you'll complete the stuff through the story mode, and then your final ascendancy, you'll be able to just do whenever you want. I think that that's awesome, um, and I totally agree with their reasoning. Um, this wasn't even something that I had like, um, I'd never even thought, thought about them changing this. Like, this is like, this is, that's like something that I'm just like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I never even thought of that. And, and I totally agree with the reasoning. The reasoning is basically saying that like, by the time that a lot of players are able to unlock that, they've mapped so much that they're kind of like way past the point where they should have been able to unlock that and when it would have been useful and stuff like that. Like, basically... Normally, when you're completing it, you've been playing for so long to to be able to access it, to try to open it, that your character's so geared that you're just like, like just walk through it, like it's nothing because your character's just like overly geared to be unlocking those points. Um, so I think that that's cool. Um, it'll make it more of like once your gear, once you're able to do it based on like your gear and the advancement of your character, you'll be able to get it. Um, so I think that that's cool. I like that. Um, so yeah. Um, obviously there's like a major rework to all of the, 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 the trees, um, the, the skill tree defenses is going to be a big thing there. There's pretty much everything that's evasion based, dodge based, um, block based, like all that stuff is basically changing, um, the their whole idea for this league is basically that defenses are too hard to get and don't blanket enough stuff basically making it so that so that like you had to like pick up all these like extra niche skills in order to be able to create a defense for a character which i totally agree with um and they didn't want that so they did some stuff to try to make it so that you could basically more reliably rely on your your armor like your actual armor <laughs> um and by that i mean like the dexterity the armor and the the energy shield um so they, they changed how they worked and then they added in like some new stuff um so but then they also removed stuff and they nerfed some stuff like they nerfed blind now to get a stronger blind you have to use like you know like increased percentage effectiveness of blind they removed dodge so now it's just evade and they also nerfed some of the evade stuff like for instance raider actually took a pretty big nerf um it went from 35 percent evade attack and spell 30 percent five percent more down to just 10 percent which is a huge nerf they said that they increased they're going to be increasing the base armor of all the items by 0 to 15%. So up to 15%, which is something you need to pay attention to now. All bases that drop will not be the same. Um, they'll be between 0 and 15% better than the actual, than just a regular base. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, also, so now we won't just be looking for just like any one specific base. You'll also want that 15% um better base base <laughs> um so that's something to pay attention to obviously if a really good item drops and it has really good stats on it you're not going to really care well you will care but it's not going to be the deciding factor um what, where it falls on that zero to 15 scale some of the changes that you're going to have to pay attention to and i'll mention this is they've added stuff they're saying like i don't know where in here it is but basically they they felt like like belts weren't functioning um, in in the capacity that 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 they felt like they should, which is basically like to buff up flasks um, or have flask related stuff because like you'd connect your flasks to your to your belt. Um, which you know if you're trying to buff up your if you're trying to buff up your <laughs> your um flasks then 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 great you have more accessibility to stuff to do that but the downside that i would say is like if you're used to crafting belts 
make sure that you check like PoEDB to make sure that like the tags um, haven't changed so you don't try to do like a craft you've been doing and then there's like conflicting tags and now that craft that you were used to doing is now like super crazy hard because they added a bunch of new stuff that can roll onto the suffix or prefix. Um, so that would be something that I would say to pay attention to. Um, other changes, so if you're playing a bow build, they, or pretty much any added percent, I know that there's a major buff to the added, like number to number cold, number to number fire, number to number lightning. For quivers, um, it the, the number to number cold, fire, or lightning damage in the prefixes used to just be like so low. It was just like a super trash stat. Like, it, it was just like completely insignificant. Um, so that's been buffed like really significantly. Um, so like if you're playing like a like an ice shot build or you know uh, elemental hit build or something like that, number number elemental damage does something for you. Um, that's gonna be actually significant now in the prefixes. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, oh, there's the fl the flash thing. Um, Um, and now we have uh, spell suppression. That's something that you should should know about since they've removed dodge. It's kind of like the answer for um, for that, which basically you can have up to a hundred percent chance to suppress. But suppress always is going to just reduce spell damage by fifty percent. Um, so that's basically what suppresses. Um, it's not just for evasion based characters. But there are like some bonuses in the mastery, like for instance, like there's one mastery that's like if your boots, gloves, and helm have evasion on them, then gain 10% chance to suppress. So like that's really strong. Um, like a 10% chance is mastery to to reduce spell damage by 50%. That's pretty dope. Um, that's pretty good. Um, so changes to, to armor, that type of stuff. Um, so cool thing about syndicate now, um, that was another thing I want to touch on. Syndicate's going to be way easier and more accessible to unlock now. Um, so if you normally are used to like trading for those things, it will probably be worth it to do some syndicate and actually get those items to unlock them. The rarer mods are going to drop more commonly and to unlock the full sets of tiers, you only have to unveil one time. So like, you know, if I unveil for, you know, the, the plus one to, to socketed supports, it's going to unlock both of them. I don't have to un unveil it twice. The... Reduced mana on attacks. I unveil that one time, and it's they're all unveiled. Um, this is really nice and needed to be done. Um, they also increase the chance that those rare ones drop. Um, this really needed to be done. I mean, there there have been leagues where I play, you know, for for two months or more, and I don't unlock all of the syndicate mods. There was even a league that I played syndicate like a lot. And I didn't unlock all of the mods, which is just absolutely crazy. Like I was farming Syndicate Mastermind for to trade the 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 diadems were really high that league, so it was just like a bonus um, to sell them. Um, and I didn't unlock all of them, and that's just crazy to actually be farming Syndicate and not be able to unlock all of the all, all of the the crafting modifiers. And it's like such an old mechanic, you know, and like. I, I don't know. It, like it's not. It's nice to have those, and I think you should still have to unlock them. Just like starting off with all of them unlocked isn't realistic, but realistically, every player being able to unlock those, I think, is something that needed to be done. Um, just because, like, as you add more new stuff to do, you can't have all of the stuff being just as hard as it was to get back when it was introduced, and that was what everyone was doing. <laughs> Um, so, so that's really nice. Um, and hopefully it'll be at like a place where like, you know, just doing your playthroughs and using your, your dailies and stuff like that, that you'll be able to unlock all of the syndicate mods. Um, so it'll just kind of come naturally as you play. I think that that will be really nice. Um, 
two passives that were added that are come from ascendancies we have the the ghost dance which it's a nerfed version of ghost dance uh basically it's a synergy between evasion and energy shield so it'll be for like someone that wants to create evasion energy shield character like you know like an energy shield bow character now with the new tree um it's really good it when it was originally in the tree it was basically when you lose a ghost shroud you recover six percent of your evasion in energy shield so if like i had you know 10,000 10,000 evasion i would regain 600 energy shield when i lost one of those ghost shrouds um and you have th three of them now it's only three percent so i'd get regain 300 energy shield when i get hit for that um, but that's still really strong the other thing that they added was that they added to to the um to the new tree is the 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 block ruin uh, I forget what the name I forget what the name of that rune is one second uh, versatile combatant so it basically gives you negative 25 percent to your max block for attack and spell damage but then for you gain two percent chance to block spell damage for every one percent ch over cap chance to block attack damage so that's cool it basically makes it so that you can add um like you can make a block build out of any ascendancy you can make a um a cool energy shield build out of any ascendancy it basically just creates the ability to make more like build diversity where you're like it's it's you're not restricted by the defenses you not restricted as much by the defensive choice that you're trying to make um okay so there's they're basically trying to make it so that support type characters are are different i'm not going to go super into this because like a large portion of people just aren't gonna be doing anything with it um but after going over the tree and stuff like that, they basically kind of want to take away the power of like a uh, aura bot character where it's basically just like stack auras and then you just walk around next to people. Um, they, they felt like that wasn't really a, a fun play style um, and not really like, like, um, like Im impactful. Like you're not really doing much. You're just basically like, all right, stand there. So they added all these new, these new skills, the link skills that, are like basically like a risk reward thing um if you're interested in those check them out there's gonna probably be some pretty sweet um combos that come out of there and it's gonna make it like more of like an active play style um as opposed to just put on a bunch of auras and then stand there the other thing that they've done that actually makes this pretty cool is they've added like a bunch of um, abilities inside of masteries to reduce the the cost of auras so individuals who are playing by themselves will have more accessibility to have more auras on themselves so i think that that's cool kind of just it's like basically like free reservation reduction through your masteries um so that's cool um it's basically gonna gonna make it so that you can get a little bit more into your character um they changed um damage over time um mainly uh i believe like the biggest changes were to ignite well ignite burning cold they overall buffed um poison damage they changed how a lot of like the the burn skill gems worked but the skill gems are um, mentioned specifically how those got changed so obviously if you know what skill you're going to be playing you should probably check to see if that skill has changed so i'm not going to go into all those changes um, just you know if you're like i'm playing a fire skill or any type of elemental skill um, look up what the changes are and read that um, I think that that's all this stuff. These are all the changes that specifically go into each one of the ascendancies. So if like you know what ascendancy you're playing, you should you should read that. I don't think I need to go over all of those. Um, all of the all of the awakened supports got changed. They either just got like about a five percent um, more damage buff, or they got a special um, skill added to them. They have some really cool ones like. 
Um, one of them is like elemental attack. Elemental damage with attack skills is really cool. Like at level 5 now, you can't take reflected elemental damage. That's super dope. There's a bunch of stuff like that. Um, I, I would suggest reading through them. Um, critical tags. This is actually a pretty big thing. It got added to a lot of the gems. Um, they changed a lot of the taggings on gems. Um, this is actually really important to note because inside of like inside of path of building, there's going to be some stuff that's going to um, to buff up like some pretty crazy um, amounts of buffs that you're going to be able to go over. <laughs> um, there, there's some pretty crazy um, like buffs and like when you first look at them, if you're used to like like certain tags, like just not really doing much for you, like this right here. Like when you first look at it, plus three to the level of all critical support gems. We are like, oh, there's not really much that's critical tagged. They added a bunch of stuff that's critical tagged now. Um, so so instead of it just saying support on like, you know, even like the, the increased criticals or increased critical damage, those used to not even have the critical tag, which is kind of funny. Um, but those do now. So something like that could be significant inside of, inside of the masteries. Um, so that's something that you should probably pay attention to. Um, and then actually see what three levels will do to those specific gems. So, and then find the breaking points. Um, so you know whether, you know, do I need to go for that 2120 or can I just do a 2020? Um, because like some, some gems, you know, like 21 to 22 doesn't do anything or 22 to 23 doesn't really do anything. But then sometimes it's like, you know, increases by that one point that's then multiplied by the mechanic of the of the of the actual skill gem so that's something you should probably pay attention to um, um, a lot of these changes don't have to do with like this whole bottom section, a lot of this stuff has absolutely nothing to do with um, the actual league. Um, a lot of these changes towards the bottom, like this Vol Immortal Call, this has to do with legacy items and permanent leagues. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in here that has to do with legacy items. Um, there wasn't really anything in here that I was just like, that's crazy. Um, so like some stuff isn't going to be able to be used anymore like unarmed characters won't be able to use quivers so basically a lot of stuff that was being used in ways that that didn't make sense is no longer going to work um like you're going to have to use correct equipment with correct um with correct skills so you know you're not going to be like using a unarmed attack with a quiver in your hand like a quiver in your hand wouldn't actually help you if you know you're trying to like fist fight someone it would just be like <laughs> a, a nuisance um but they've kind of already been kind of heading in that direction where they're trying to make stuff make more sense like casters used to always use like a bow and arrow and all the stats on the quiver used to work for spells and they're like that doesn't really make sense um so they kind of cha started changing that um to where like you know the the criticals and stuff like that from the quivers only work towards bow skills so tornado um this is talking about like uh tornado coming from from one of the beast Jerry items it's now been renamed um tornado i'm super stoked about it looks pretty cool if you're playing a projectile build um definitely be something to try out um xanamods these are really dope xanamods we got blight for 8c um legion for six beyond for five ambush for um essences this is dope and we got breach so this is the other reason why i was saying like like the like breach and um legion are probably going to be the two most played you're going to be able to hit breaches at um for 2c as your first unlock so that's probably just going to get pumped by like the mass majority of everyone um unless you're pumping fortune favors the brave honestly you can't really lose with fortune favors the brave except you could lose one c by getting breach because everything that's on here is good there's literally nothing bad on the atlas this league so super early on you might want to pump fortune favors the brave um essences is good 
especially since they they buffed that um you're obviously not going to get the most out of essences unless you're playing the zone and you know essences drop one to your higher um but ambush you know four extra strong boxes um if you're pumping fortune favors the brave for 3c beyond you know um beyond for 3c you can't really lose their legion for 3c can't lose their blight for 3c the average of all these things you're going to wind up coming out if you pump fortune favors the brave obviously once you have all of them unlocked you're going to choose to just run the one that you're specifically farming for and you've put you know um, points into so that you're actually maximizing on it um but yeah um these these should be this is a super good set of um xana modifiers um so yeah glad glad on that um all right and then i think the rest of this is like it's telling you where you can get gems and changes to who can get what and these are like all the the bug fixes and stuff like that but that's pretty much everything summed up that you should know about the patch notes um summed up as much as i can <laughs> um anyways looking forward to the league hope that this has been helpful if you have any questions go ahead and let me know i will be making a guide um covering what what i'll be starting as my league start and what i plan to be playing early it's going to be a combination of one of those things that that i'm that i've already said i mean those are pretty much the only choices but i've kind of made my own choices and i kind of know what i want to play now and since gems have been released all the changes it's pretty much gonna be finalized so i'll get that video out soon anyways thanks for watching if you're not already go ahead and hit the subscribe button like comment and share thanks for watching peace